This is the fourth and the final session on Abraham, learning from his life journey of faith. We're going to read again our theme verse, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, or better yet, know him, and he will make your paths straight. Now we come to, how should I say, the climax of Abraham's life. Let's read chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21, verses 1 to 5. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age. At the very time God had promised him, Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him, as God commanded him. Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. <clears throat> you know, in our walk of faith uh, with God, it was never easy to learn to wait before the Lord. From the time Abraham entered the promised land and God's promise of his descendant to be a great nation, Abraham waited 25 years. How God was faithful to him and the son was born through his wife, Sarah. Why sometimes God would delay the fulfillment of his promises? There are quite a few reasons I could think of. One, of course, is a test of our faith. Can we hold on to the faith, believing in God's faithfulness and not sway, compromise, hesitate. Stay firm, trusting him. Sometimes God delayed because we were not ready. Spiritually, we're not ready to handle the blessing. And sometimes when a blessing coming too quickly, it sidetracks us spiritually. And sometimes the reasons is just like when Jesus heard that Mary Martha's brother was ill, he delayed a few more days. And in this case, 
His delay is so that God can work the impossible. And Sarah, Abraham, beyond the age of childbirth, gave birth. Give much glory to God. And just like the raising of Lazarus from his death, glorious unto the name of God. Let's read chapter 22, Genesis. Chapter 22. Verse 20 and 23. Something you probably will pass through and ignore. Sometime later, Abraham was told, Milka is also a mother. She has borne sons to your brother, Naho. Us, the firstborn, Bus, his brother, Camille, the father of Abram, Kisset, Hazor, Pudash, Gilab, and Bethel. Bethel became the father of Rebekah. Milka bore these eight sons to Abraham's brother now. It's kind of, um, I don't know what it's called, ironic or humorous. You know, God changed Abram's name to Abraham from exalted father to father of many. I mean, when you are Abram, exalted father, I mean, you could be father of one, still exalted. But now, Abraham, father of many. And he waited 25 years. Finally, one son, Isaac. And then Abraham was told, his brother, Nahor, had eight sons. Sometimes, it's not that easy to hold on to our faith. especially when we were tempted to compare to others. Abraham, the father of men. And he learned that his brother has eight sons. That's also a test of faith. God will make Abraham's descendants as numerous as the sands, the beach, and the stars, and the sky. Before I turn to the final test of Abraham's faith, the offering of his son, I just want all of us to turn to Hebrews chapter 11. This is the famous, how should I say, the Hall of Fame, 
for all those giants in faith. Because there are a few places commenting on Abraham. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 to 12. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. He left a major metropolitan city, Ur. By faith, he marched out to a place that God promised. No idea, would that be cities? Would that be abundance of water? Would the neighbors be friendly or hostile? Did not know. But by faith, he left and obeyed. Continue verse 9. By faith, he made his home in the promised land. Like a stranger in a foreign country, he lived in tents as the Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him, of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. You know, Lot, when he moved to the Jordan Plain, he eventually settled down in the city of Sodom. But Abraham never settled. He always pitched his tent. And when the grass land were eaten up by his herds, they pack up and move to another place. Nothing permanent. It's always a stranger passing through. I think this is a good attitude, a mental attitude for us Christians. The world is very colorful. Many things are there. Yes, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. We are just passing through, pitching a tent here, there. Nothing permanent. We don't linger and hold on to something. It may be here today. It could be gone tomorrow. We look to our heavenly home that Jesus is preparing for each one of us. That is our home that we look to. Everything else, just temporary. Verse 11. By faith Abraham, even though he was past age and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand 
on the seashore. By faith, Abraham believed the impossible. Because both he and Sarah were past the childbearing age. Because he knew his God. That his God was faithful. Now, let us turn to Genesis chapter 22. Let's read from verse 1. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Maria. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and saddled his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servant, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. But the two of them went on together. Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and lay him on the altar, on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me, your son, your only son. Whenever I read this story, it really touched me. Abraham truly was the father of faith. <clears throat> when God called out to him and said, to so take your son, your only son, Isaac, the one you love, and go to Maria and sacrifice him there as a burnt offering. He obeyed immediately. I want you to know this son, Isaac, is precious to him. The only son he got at old age, 100 years old. And after hearing God's command, did you notice? He dare not discuss this with Sarah. Because he knew that if you ever mentioned about that, 
Sarah will stop him. So he went with Isaac, two servants, without telling Sarah. I want you to realize the implication of this. If Abraham came back and Sarah found out that Abraham sacrificed their only son without checking with her, I think she will probably never talk to her. Abraham again. You have to realize by taking this action in faith, he was going to lose. Everything, everyone most dear to him. His son and his wife. And not only this, he did not understand why God made this request. This is not like the God he know. Yeah, he obeyed. He did not say, oh, for many of us, was, oh, whoa, God want me to give up this. Uh, let me pray some more. He obeyed. You know, if God said there's an important reason why we have to sacrifice Isaac, because out of his sacrifice we can, let's say, save. 25 people. Okay, then at least I can, Abraham can understand. The sacrifice of my son has a purpose. But in this case, it seemed to be for no purpose. Abraham obeyed. He obeyed when he knew that he would lose any everything most dear to him. He obeyed even though he did not understand why. He trusts God. To the point that he doesn't need a good reason from God. He knew God well enough. That in spite of the surface, everything looks dark and make no sense. He 
he believed that God would do the right thing. Even though it seems like all the plans will be turned upside down. Because God said the promise of the descendants will be through Isaac. And in spite of all this, Abraham obeyed. No, that is faith. And if you and I have this kind of faith, we can move mountains. Let me end. By reciting again our theme verse. Trust in the law with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding. In all our ways, know Him, and He will make our paths straight. May God bless you.